Breaking riot police swarm as protesters shut down universities at the beginning of Passover. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever. This is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. Yeah, so tensions are that high in New York City right now. And so we've got, again, Passover begins this evening at sundown. And Columbia University is telling its students not to uh, be careful, but to actually go home. Uh, and we will do virtual class at least for the next couple of days because we cannot control the riots and the anti-Jewish protest that are occurring on our campuses right now. And, Logan, I mean, this is while New York has got a lot going on. you got the Trump trial yeah. going on. You've got yeah, Letitia James time. trying to get his bond thrown down. So you've got another trial there. But you've also got multiple universities. It's happening also. It's not just in New York. It's at America's top university. It's happening at Yale University, too, where Jewish students don't feel safe. And these pro-Hamas activist students have decided, yeah. let's choose Passover to make this – a statement to the world and to the country that we stand with Hamas. Yeah, I don't even think it's just those colleges. Those are the ones that get attention because they are the top. supposed to be the top, the highest level of learning you could have in the country. Right. But they're the ones having to get texts overnight saying, hey, guys, I think we need a reset. That's what I believe what the head of was at Columbia said. We need a reset. So <laughs> everybody take the day. We're going to go. It probably looks like the week, potentially, the week of Passover. Yeah, we're going like to find out. Um, but we're going virtual. You know, thankfully, they learned how to do that. They're going virtual for the next day because yeah, during of the, the coming days. Because of the escalation that's happened at Columbia, obviously we saw what happened at Yale as uh, you know, riot police swarmed and, and, and got people you know, arrested. Chaos is breaking out. Anti-Semitism breaking out, like you said, and also in New York, you are having the Trump trial. We're going to talk about that as well coming up. So yes, it is a packed t uh, show. We've got great guests coming up. We have Harry Hutchinson joining us, Jeff Balaban, Cece Heil. All will be with us in the next hour, so stay tuned for that as we continue this discussion of what's happening. It really is sad. Uh, it's chaotic, and it, it's not localized to, oh, this is one incident. Yep. This is not one incident like we brought up the Dearborn, Michigan, where they're chanting death to America. It's That is not one incident. That's yeah. what you hear about. So you hear about Yale. You hear about Columbia, but it's happening across the board. Yeah, but we've heard it from... People have got their kids at universities all across the country that they are, again, you can hear it outside the, the university, uh, whatever class you're in. These protests are occurring nonstop. They're going till late at night, and they're utilizing key times and key moments. So these students in New York, they know there's a lot of attention in New York right now. There's the Trump trials in New York right now. There's Passover in New York right now. There's a lot of Jewish students in New York right now. There's a lot of Muslim students in New York right now. So what do we do? With all these cameras, we'll protest. We'll say things that are extreme. We'll go on camera. But it's getting violent, Logan. I mean, we've got we've had people that have been stabbed in the eye that have been on Fox that had to go to the hospital. We're having classes shut down. And effectively, um, one of the students, I think that was so sad that she said, she said, one of my roommates for three years, it's like, it's like you've been a roommate for three years, and they've joined the Nazi party. That's crazy. And they were my best friend for three years, and they went and joined the Nazis. I mean, think about it like that. That's some of these friendships that are breaking up yeah. at these universities over, again, they say it's over what happened in Israel October 7th. This, that was just the moment utilized by these extremist groups to begin this movement. Right, exactly. It's another politicized moment that can end your friendships, end your relationships, begin this sort of hate towards a group of people. Uh, we saw what happened, honestly, uh, in last president's election, and now we're seeing it on a wider scale. We're actually saying liberals have to deal with it, because you're saying a lot of these kids, these are liberal kids. These are not conservative kids no. who are coming there. These are kids who uh, likely grew up in very liberal homes, very tolerant homes, now having to deal. Saying that New York is no longer a place that's safe for Jewish yeah. Young people, the number one place in the world uh, for Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. I think mean, outside than, outside of Israel. Yeah. Give us a call. Love to hear from you. One 684 thirty one ten. One eight hundred six eight four three one one zero. Also, we are in the tail end now of the Life and Liberty Drive. Just hit twenty one thousand champions. We'll discuss that coming up. You can obviously support at aclj.org. But give us a call. Love to hear from you. 
Demonstrations continue on university campuses. New York's Columbia University announcing all classes will be held virtually today. University President Manu Shafiq issuing a statement saying we need a reset to de-escalate the rancor. Videos online show protesters promising to carry out massacres similar to the Hamas attack of October 7th, chanting phrases like, we are Hamas. In a letter to administrators, over 100 students write, those of us living on and off campus cannot come and go from our homes to campus as we please without fear of being threatened, harassed, or assaulted. Columbia University is boosting security ahead of the Passover holiday with more protests expected around campus. The school now adding 35 guards and more than 100 additional safety personnel. The move comes as a rabbi at Columbia is urging students to return home as soon as possible. Rabbi Eli Buechler in a letter to Jewish students this weekend going on to say no one should have to endure this level of hatred. I would spit on walking to class, cursed at, yelled at. It's not a safe or welcoming environment. I dread coming to school. We have to acknowledge that if the students are no longer safe on campus, this is not a peaceful protest, and that's what's legal. If you go beyond peace, then you have to be taken away. We don't even know who is who because students are coming in and out, and there are lots of non-students and non-Columbia people on campus, and it's just a very scary time for everybody in the community. When they say we don't want no Zionists here and death to the Zionist state, you know, what's the game plan? Where should we go? Right now they're saying go back to Poland. We all know what happened last time the Jews were in Poland. Replace Jews with any other minority group here. And what would the entire country be doing? They would be outraged, rightly so. They're calling for intifada. You hear them calling for the genocide of Jews. You hear the from the river to the sea chant. These are not protesters. These are people who are calling for war. To Secchio. We have we talked about this at the college campuses, but we've also talked about how this has been in the major cities across the country. Really, October 7th, you would not think was the beginning of the moment you would see this hatred of Jews. But what we did say, Logan, was that after about a week, you would have the world kind of feel bad for the for the people of Israel because of the attacks were so extreme. But that once Israel began to respond to what Hamas did. And this carried over for a week or then two weeks or three weeks. And then it became six months that suddenly the world would turn on Israel. And we, we've compiled kind of, I think, and our friends at Memory have compiled too, yeah. how these protests have gotten so extreme just in the, around New York. I mean, whether it's universities, in the streets, and in the subways. Take, take a, if, you're, if you're watching the show, watch this. If you're listening, just listen. Repeat after me. We have We have Zionists. We have Zionists. Who have entered the camp. So we're, so we're shutting down, and Logan, what we're hearing is that more and more yeah. common areas are being shut down now. This just Columbia sent kids home. Yeah, Columbia went to full virtual today. Yep. Uh, Harvard has announced that Harvard Yard, essentially the common areas, uh, have been closed at least until Friday. And it, I mean, the headline. Does on that the mean ha- they're going to clear out all the protesters? Well, I'm at the. I'm on the Harvard Crimson, yeah. like their paper, uh, you know, website. It says Harvard Yard closed until Friday in anticipation of pro-Palestine protests. So that is the the headline. We'll read more into that. But we're seeing now more and more this happening. Look, we saw it last week. I know we talked about it. You talked about it with Google where there was the sit-in. And guess what happened? Mass firing of all those people. So maybe we're at the point of mass firing and arrests. Yeah, that's I what mean, you'd hope. I, that's what I think you would hope. I want to go to Harry Hutchinson here because, Harry, you've worked in the university setting. But you said that you, you believe that really this was all kind of a precursor to something that's been set up against uh, Jewish students and Jewish professors for years, and that this is the culmination of that is what we're seeing at America's top universities, which are making so much news. And by the way, if it's happening at America's top universities, folks, it's happening at every university. They're just the news gatherers. Right. You're precisely correct, uh, Jordan. So what we have 
in the United States is basically a movement, and this movement has been set in motion over the last several years. So the movement is designed to classify Jews and supporters of Israel as oppressors. And the individuals in uh, Palestine, for instance, the pro-Hamas individuals, they are now classified as what? Victims. And so in our uh, American system, if you are classified as a victim, you gain political and moral power. And so at Columbia, we see individuals who are proudly supporting Hamas, yelling, Al-Qassam, you make us proud. Take another soldier out. We say justice. We say how. Burn Tel Aviv to the ground. Hamas, we love you. We support your rockets, too. And so all of this has happened after October 7th when Hamas launched an unprovoked assault on Israel. And now Israel is seen in the eyes of elites as the oppressor. You know, I think what is interesting here, Logan, is that, again, you see it's it's taken extreme steps of violence for these schools to even step in. I mean, we've seen presidents of these schools fired. Yeah, there's actually... (laughs) uh, Because of anti-Semitism. We're seeing schools have to shut down and go virtual because of Passover now this week and protest. They have lost control of their campuses. So they they are saying two things. We cannot protect our students. We cannot protect our faculty. Yeah, and I think look, there's a concern. If you can't protect your students or your faculty, you have to shut down as a university. Well, if you coming out of sort of the protest movements in the last handful of years, I think there's also probably concern within the faculty of going, what is our line? Where can we go? Because you don't want to be you know, essentially labeled as on the wrong side of history, if you will, as a educational board. So you're going, where's our line? It was very clear for them what their line was four years ago or what their line are, is for specific. That's fine. But when you get this one that gets a little more nuanced. Yeah, it gets a little more pro-Hamas. Yeah, a little bit more supporting terror, not just anti-police or something like that. It calls for the death of Jews. It becomes a bit harder to deal with. And look, there are 45 uh, colleges right now that the U.S. Department of Education has listed as under investigation for anti-Semitism. 45. (laughs) I mean, I have the list. I can't read them to you because it would take too long. That means that the college itself is doing nothing or is actually... Uh, fostering. There's a reason to investigate. There's a reason yeah, to I mean, investigate. I mean, there are plenty on here. Like a lot of them, kind of, as you'd expect, you know, coastal elite kind of universities. Uh, and and that's just truth. Obviously, if Columbia, Carnegie Mellon. Uh, you you have you can go through here. Berkeley. Uh, we, we can go through all of them. But you'd expect I me. Mean, but 75. I mean, a huge group or 45. Excuse me, 45 uh, currently under investigation. Well, the other point I would make is that the Europeans are further along in fostering anti-Semitism. So what we are seeing in the United States, in many respects, just scratches the surface of what's going on in Europe. And so one of the things that I think the American people and supporters of the ACLJ should keep in mind is that this is a particularly important moment in history. And I think the American people should respond to the vitriol and the hatred, which is expanding in the world right now. So it is alarming. If you look at what's going on at Yale University, at Columbia, if you look at the death to America and death to Israel chants in Dearborn, Michigan, and many elites are basically responding positively to these developments, which suggests that hatred of Jews has now become more and more mainstream. You know, we have not seen anti-Semitism like this since World War II. It's a moment uh, to defend Israel and Jewish students being attacked, especially right here in the United States on campuses. I mean, they're here at home. The fact is, this is the United States of America where this is happening. We are not reporting about Iran saying, you know, there's these protests about killing Jews. This is New York. Uh, this is uh, Harvard. This is Boston. This is in Cambridge. I mean, this, this is, again, the United States of America. This is our school saying we can't keep you safe, and it's Passover these next couple of days, so just go and have virtual school because we've got to have a reset on campus. That's what's happening at Columbia. 
We are fighting back at the ACLJ. You know, we succeeded in securing religious accommodations during Passover at Georgia yeah, State we just University. Talked about that, that happened just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Georgia State said, uh, "No, we're going to have exams during Passover." Sorry, Jewish students, and we were able to step in and really very quickly right. get them to reverse that. So much so that they had to blast it out to their entire student uh, body and say, "Hey, we will actually." Be accommodating those. So know that we we're, that we're on that. We also uh, got demand letters out to 32 countries calling on them to designate Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist group and impose new sanctions over the direct attack on Israel. Now Israel's responded. I mean, we have been – so we've been active there internationally. We've been active in our own schools. We've also gotten – Inside the U.N. We're going to talk to C.C. Heil about this, too, later in the broadcast as well. But, Logan, what is important here is what we're seeing inside our own country, which is this should be a country where whether you're in New York or Atlanta or Nashville or Los Angeles or Kansas City or wherever you are, um, Chicago, that it should be safe to be Jewish in the United States of America during Passover, even if there's controversy over what is going on in Israel and the Palestinian territories. It should be safe to be Jewish here. Yeah, you think so. And, you know, you are. This is the first night of Passover. This is uh, when it all begins for a lot of the Jewish people. I was in Florida over the weekend, uh, you know, in sort of a gated vacation area uh, where a lot of Jewish people have, especially Orthodox, have come there specifically because it is safe. It is gated. They can take care of, you know, they, they can feel safe to be openly Jewish walking around. And when you say that, I mean, those are Orthodox. It's very clear, you know, in, in what you're wearing and those kind of things, traditional sure. garb. We want to be there for people, though, when they are in need. And right now, look, we have ACLJ Jerusalem. That was obviously very important. It was always important. We didn't yeah. think we'd honestly need to activate essentially what we've been doing at ACLJ Jerusalem in our own country. But we're having yeah. to right now. And during this Life and Liberty Drive, which we are just, you know, is what, 10 days, eight days left in the Life and Liberty Drive, where all donations are doubled. You can be a part of it right now. As you, as Jordan said, we have sent, sent demand letters to uh, 32 countries calling on them to designate uh, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist group. We obviously succeeded in that Georgia State University, a situation for kids who just wanted to celebrate Passover and were being denied. Here, Logan, we can help them. ACLJ.org slash help. If you're one of these students yeah. that's been attacked on these campuses, you need to contact us. Jeff Alabon's yeah, coming absolutely. up Absolutely. And we've been we've been representing these students at no cost to them. Yeah, I'll make sure that's clear. The reason it's no cost is because we get support from you. So aclj.org slash help. If you know any students that are having these, uh, you know, obviously attacks on them, tell them to go that way, and we will represent them at absolutely no cost. We couldn't do that without your generous support, without people that are willing to step up right now. And during our Life and Liberty Drive, as I said, all donations are doubled. And we also encourage you, if you can, become an ACLJ champion. Over 21,000 of you have creates a great baseline each and every month for us. We'll be right back. What could the U.S. do you think? Like, like I, you know, we're walking through like, to kind of deter, you know, if you, I don't, maybe you can't get specific, but basically make clear, you know, to Iran, you take these steps. Uh, we're going to be standing si- beside Israel, and uh, this could be the, I mean, maybe it's strong language, but uh, this could be the reason why uh, your entire Islamic Republic uh, is destroyed uh, because you because of decisions like you said, uh, Secretary Pompeo, that they have decided to make, uh, that they have decided to take these aggressive steps and coordinate and fund Hamas to to uh, carry out the October seventh attacks at, at Hezbollah and in Syria and all these other areas where they try to destabilize uh, in the Gulf states as well. And there might be pretty widespread support uh, from those Gulf states and other other uh, major Muslim countries in that region who are also sick and tired of Iran uh, uh, supporting groups that are firing missiles into their country. Uh, I know they might not love saying it. The scope and and nature of the responses are uh, highly varied. You can you can make them very nuanced. Uh, so we ought to be, I hope they've thought about that in the Biden administration. Um, we thought about it all the time. How is it that we restore that deterrence if it should be the case that we lose it? And then finally, uh, not only is it about the the effort that's undertaken, call it a strike or a response or a, uh, you know, how how we counter, um, but what's really important is convincing the Iranian regime that the American leadership is capable and serious and competent. And when it comes to deterrence, right, Vladimir Putin rolls into Ukraine. Uh, we lose 13 Americans in Afghanistan. Now we have the catastrophe that is the Middle East. America is a lot less secure and a lot less safe when we don't have leadership in the White House and at our security agencies that are 
focused on merit and on deterring the bad guys from doing dangerous things to the United States of America. All right, welcome back to Secular. We are uh, taking your phone calls to 1-800-684-3110. That's 1-800-684-3110. We're going to go to Jeff Balabata. Jeff, again, uh, you oversee our office at ACLJ Jerusalem. You're also in uh, New York, and this is a time you've you've attended a lot of these universities. Yale Law School, you've had a son who's attended Columbia Law School, and uh, we're seeing them have to you know close down. Harvard Squares had to shut down the the open area there, which has basically been taken over like a tent city, which I guess they'll be clearing out. Columbia is doing, you know, at home schooling. But you've actually tied this as well to what the administration's been doing, which is that I, I do want you to point out that the Biden administration, along with Secretary Blinken, has called out a specific division within the IDF uh, that they want to sanction and, and, uh, and call out specifically. And it's a religious. A division of the IDF that they want to call out specifically uh, for potential acts of violence and even uh, war crimes. Yeah, Jordan, it's totally baseless. Uh, the leadership, the, the the civilian leadership in Israel and the military leadership in Israel has rallied around saying there's no basis for this. They're furious at what what Joe Biden has done. And, they, you know, they've singled out Biden and Blinken have singled out this battalion which is famous for being a battalion, you know, a lot of the, what they call ultra-Orthodox, the most right-wing religious Israelis don't serve in the army because the army itself, the, the environment isn't conducive. So they created this in order to be able to be religious. They're fully observant, et cetera. They're considered excellent soldiers, highly moral, et cetera, et cetera. And here they are singling out, and there's no doubt in my mind, I don't have evidence of this, there's no doubt in my mind that somebody's feeding this, these lies, these libels to uh, the Biden administration. But from the beginning, Jordan, what, what what Biden has done and what Blinken has done is they wag their fingers at Israel. They suggest every time Hamas claims something which we know to be false, it's always, always proven false. They blame Israel for something. And Joe Biden will wag his finger at Israel or, or, or Blinken will wag. His, and that the problem is it not only promotes hatred, incitement and justification for violence against Jews around the world, but it's doing so here in New York. And let's be clear. They don't hate Israel because of anything Israel does. They hate Israel because it's Jewish. They don't hate the Jews because of Israel or anything Israel does. They hate the Jews because we're Jews. And this has been, it's the oldest hatred and it's manifesting itself again now. And what Biden and Blinken are doing, they're puring fuel on the flames by inciting through libels and slanders against the army. And that has repercussions here in America. Yeah, it seems like a very bad time to be calling out, you know, and trying to be so unique and saying, you know, Logan, hey, let's call it this specific division at the IDF. And and this is an IDF division that happens to be very religious. And we're going to say, well, we don't like what they're doing. And like people are being um, right now so uh, specific in their protests when they're calling for the death of Jews. Yeah. And the the death of Israel and the destruction of Israel. I actually want. Can we take Chris's call from Washington State online too? Hey, Chris, welcome to Seculo. You're on the air. Thank you. And my question is: is that we have allowed the uh, people to come after the Jewish people in our country, and they're not being protected by the military. And our freeways are being shut down, like the Golden Gate Bridge the other day. They they block the the freeways and so why don't we do something about that because all i hear is talk 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 and nobody Let me say something uh, chris because here uh jeff i want to make it clear if you go to aclj.org slash help that's why i took chris's call jeff we are doing something about that if you contact us if you need help we represent these students we represent faculty as well and we fight back and we get their rights restored so we don't just talk 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 we fight 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 that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm in discussions and haven't, you know, this didn't start this week. The truth is, we saw this at CUNY at City University of New York and other universities, which have very large Jewish populations, but also have large Muslim populations uh, or just happen to have large progressive and very woke populations. This has been building and building and now it's become street violence. And so, yes, we've been dealing with individual students, with faculty, with groups of them, advising them, guiding them, sometimes representing them in litigation. We, we're working on policy across the board. We are, in fact, fighting every single day because this has become a global war against Jews, and the biggest population of Jews outside Israel is America. 
You know, Jeff, one of those other issues I want to talk about as well is we, we saw that it, it gets kind of like to this point where it gets out of control. And then the schools say, you know what, we'll shut down. They know they're going to get a lot of attention from Congress. Uh, Congressman Stefani from New York's done a great job of doing that, uh, bringing attention. But it's still happening at these schools to the point where they are either saying we're going to have to shut down the university itself, send in riot police. I mean, if, if you're identified as an Orthodox Jew or Jewish right now and you try to just walk through one of these protests right now, you can be injured. You can be beaten. And and this is uh, the schools have effectively uh, lost control. Jordan, it, it's it's literally the case that there are people are showing images now of what it looked like in Hitler's Nazi Germany in the late '30s, where you'd see students wearing Nazi armbands, wearing swastikas, and doing literally the exact same things, the exact same things to Jewish students on campus. Now they're wearing kafiyas, which is, of course, the Arab-Palestinian symbol for terror it's, and violence. It's not a religious garb, which people claim. It's not religious. It is It is actually a political statement, and it's a statement of terror, statement of genocide against the Jews. And it's ubiquitous now, and it's, it is not just like what we saw in Germany. I mean, the truth is, I come from a Holocaust survivor family. I know, Jordan, your family also comes from that part of the world. And the fact is, we are seeing what's happening now, and I can say it is not as bad. It looks like it's worse, because we have the Holocaust in the rearview mirror. We know exactly what that leads to, and yet, more and more, this is growing in popularity around the world. And so unless America steps up, and your, and your caller was right, why aren't people doing something? The mayor of New York decries it, says it's terrible, but he can't send in the NYPD because Columbia is a private university campus. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. So instead, they're saying, don't go to campus. Listen, when Biden was running because of the mainstreaming of anti-Semitism in, in democratic politics, uh, his Jewish, uh, one of his Jewish advisors actually put out the word, maybe Jews in America should stop wearing their yarmulkes or their Jewish stars. That's nuts. That's not what America is supposed to be. No, no, it is not. And, and listen, I mean, Logan, where you're going to fight back at the ACLJ, listen, I have a star David on right now. And I do think twice a little bit now. Where I am, most places I don't think it's an issue, but I sometimes from with my kids or things like that, you know, you say, hey, maybe let's push it to the side a little bit more there. That's something that I would have ever had you to do in the United States before. of America. No, you never have thought about that before. And, and thankfully, there are still areas in this country that don't feel that way. I was in Central Florida over the weekend. Like I said, as you drove through sort of the more rural areas, it's pretty amazing. You've seen that in Tennessee here, too. Uh, and look, thank Johnny Cash if you want to go back to the history. Uh, that Israel, the support of Israel is still so strong. Yep. So you're driving through what you consider rural Florida, and you see you know, Israeli flags flying. It, it, it really, there are still those glimmers of hope of going, okay, they can paint that those are the areas, the you know, central Florida and, and sort of maybe areas that are considered lower income, that that's where racism is and that's yeah. where they – but really, when you dive in, you know where it is. It's coming out of the Ivy Leagues yeah. way more than it is coming out of a, a essentially a trailer park in central Florida. The uh, most expensive cities in our country are the ones right now that are most overrun by, yeah. by yeah. Um, radical groups. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. the well, Jeff – Today I was feeding a meter and somebody just walked by, sees my yarmulke and says, God bless you. We live in a crazy world, but have a beautiful Passover. And I love that. And that's what the people who support ACLJ. That's the kind of people we need them to step up and help because this is what America is happening to America and ACLJ is fighting it. Yeah, we need those kind of statements into action. You can support the work of the ACLJ at ACLJ.org. And again, right now, folks, double that impact on your life and liberty drive. We'll be right back. Second half hour of Seculo coming up. Folks, last year we launched our first ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive, and even we couldn't anticipate how successful it would become. Thanks to you, our ACLJ members and champions, the rights to life and liberty are the cornerstones of our constitutional republic, but they are under attack. That is why we're proud to announce the return of the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive. This month, we're redoubling our efforts to beat back the radical left's attacks on your constitutional freedoms and to defend the sanctity of human life, not just here at home, but around the world, the lives of the unborn, the persecuted around the globe, and our family, friends, and allies in Israel. 
This is your moment to get in the fight. Every tax-deductible gift you give will be doubled through the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive, giving you twice the impact to defend your freedoms and help us fight to literally save lives. This is your time. Go to ACLJ.org right now and join us in this fight. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever, this is Seculo. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. And if you didn't think New York was crazy enough right now with these protests with the Palestinians, throw two Trump trials in a day. Logan. I know. If you're looking at the news, it's like they're showing a live <laughs> shot of New York you know, and a live shot of New York. And it's just different yeah. levels of protests, uh, similar crowds. It started 7 a.m. for me uh, today uh, with uh, the first discussion on Newsmax of what it would be like today for the Trump trial with Alvin Bragg. So this one is the first day that you've got both – the prosecutors and the defense are putting forward their opening statements. Then uh, the prosecution will put forward on uh, its case, and the defense will then put on its case. Uh, but they are actually closing early today at 2 o'clock, today and tomorrow, because of Passover. Passover right. So you've got in, that in York, happening that in uh, New York. But you've also got a second Trump case going on. Letitia James tried to have the Trump bail bond thrown out. You know, got got cut down. From five hundred and fifty million dollars to one hundred and sixty-five million dollars, but she doesn't like the guy's company who's come in and said we can actually handle the hundred sixty-five million, and it's that judge again who wanted it to be five hundred fifty million, yeah. who is now going to say what that they don't trust this billionaire guy to insure one hundred fifty million dollars. So that's all happening in New York right now, Logan. And we'll get into more of the Trump stuff in the next week, so people kind of know like where does that stand. Um, that's all happening in the same city where these protests are happening. Yeah. I mean, it is it kind of feels out of control. Yeah, in the next segment, we're going to be joined uh, by C.C. Hiles going to come in as well. But we're going to continue, especially at the end, talk more about the Trump situation. If you have a question or comment related to any of these topics, Israel, uh, obviously Trump on trial, all the stuff that's happening right now, uh, seems like it's all centered in New York, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call. We're going to take all those calls, as many as we can, at the end of the show, the last segment, which is only a few minutes away. So one 800 Six eight four thirty one ten. Go get in line because we're going to take all those calls we can to the end of the show. But let's go ahead and take one. Let's go to Whitney in Texas watching on Rumble. Thank you. We love Rumble. Rumble free speech platform. Whitney, you're, or, uh, Whitney, you're on the air. Thanks so much. Um, you know, I went to Columbia 30 years ago and graduated from there. And when I was there, we had a kosher dining hall. And there would be residential halls that were dark from, you know, Friday evening through Saturday because students were actively practicing Sabbath. And you've got buildings that are called Altschul and Lehman and Sulzberger. So, you know, it's ironic that these students have these opportunities and these facilities because of the generosity of Jews. And uh, I, I guess my question for the president would be, you need to take a reset. Well, what are you resetting to? 20 years ago, before your faculty started indoctrinating students? Um, and, and, you know, the, these Jewish students who are Orthodox, of course, are identifiably Jewish, but also identifiably conservative. So I'm wondering if it's even broader than anti-Semitism. Um, you know, maybe if the students, if the Christian students were more identifiable, they'd be attacked as well. It seems like it's, you know, it's anti-Semitic and anti-conservative. Yeah, I, I think, listen, a lot has changed since all of us have gone to universities. I mean, it doesn't feel like that long ago I was at school in Washington, D.C. We are another school, GW, which has a very large uh, Jewish student population. And, uh, again, uh, I would imagine right now, well, we, I know that there have been horrific things put up on uh, you know, buildings named after Jewish donors to yeah, the school, projected, uh, projected onto the, to the library that were horrendous against Jews. I mean, yes, taken down ultimately, but this would not have happened you know, 15, 20 years ago when I was there. 25 years ago, maybe it was. <laughs> yeah. um, and you have to wonder now, like, you know, we have younger kids, not that young. Like, where are they going to go where you feel like they're going to not um, well, there's a feel lot of like calls. you have to accept this, at least accept this hatred to even move on so that you don't get attacked while you're walking through campus? Yeah, I was looking at some of the Instagrams I follow. I follow a lot of accounts that are sort of Zionist groups, and a lot of them were saying, hey, you know, this may be the time when we need to start essentially making the yeshivas, the the Ivy League versions of this. But that obviously doesn't really represent a lot of people who feel this way. That would just be for very specific students. But you do wish you had more, I guess you'd say, traditionally conservative outlets uh, at the highest level of education. A lot of people wonder that as well, is would more conservative places... 
also tie into the fact that and it's not really true, though, that you necessarily have to be conservative to be pro-Jewish, no. but it it's sadly, to that's feel that way, feels that way. But hey, we are in the final days of our life in Liberty Drive. Join us right now, aclj.org. We're going to talk about that a lot more coming up. Give us a call, 1-800-684-3110. CC, we were contacted by a parent of a high school student, also a parent who served on a, a school board. It's Lake Central uh, School Corporation in Indiana. And tell us what happened when that parent uh, contacted us through aclj.org slash help, which is where you go, folks, if you think you need the ACLJ's assistance. This parent had two, two children, two daughters, that ran on a track team. And they would pray before their track meets. And they literally had the track coach come up and tell them, don't let me see you do that again. And then later on, about two days later at another meet, he doubled down and he said, the only thing that they can do is be, be seen being in an individualized moment of reflection. And then he doubled down again, I would say triple down, and basically said that individualized moment of reflection could only be five seconds. So as soon as we were alerted by the parents, we took action. We contacted the school. Um, in this situation, we actually had to file a lawsuit. Um, but as soon as we filed that lawsuit, we entered into settlement negotiations the very next day, and we have settled this case. Public sc- school students may pray or en- engage in religious activities or religious expressions before, during, and after the school day in the same manner and to the same extent that students may engage in non-religious activities or expression. And what's great is they have to post that on their website, and they actually have a statement in bold red on their website that says that. Um, It literally says Lake Central School Corporation has amicably resolved the recent lawsuit with the ACLJ. So it was a great win, not only for our clients, but all of the current students in the Lake Central Mm -hmm. District, and as well as all future students of this school. Welcome back. I did want to encourage everyone who's watching on YouTube right now, they just put up a brand new poll. I'm going to ask you all to vote in this poll right now, which uh, as do the Trump matter. So I know a lot of you have questions or comments about that. I'm going to ask you to engage in that poll so we can get a reading. Those are always great. When you see those polls pop up, that's because we are trying to check with our audience of how you're feeling. We want to know your feelings on current situations. So do that right now. Vote in that poll. Uh, and also get in line. Give us a call. 1-800-684-3110. we got two lines open right now. And after this segment, we'll take as many of those calls as possible. Jordan, we have CeCe Heil joining us uh, with some ACLJ-related news. Yeah, that's right. And I do want to get to this, CeCe, because I think it's important. And I, and I also think... When we see all this craziness, and I do want people to take the poll because I've been following the trial really closely. If people want more information about that, we don't have cameras there, only reporters. So Yeah, I wanted to bring that I, up. Yeah, r- real because quick. People are asking, and I mean, I was calling our guys like, are we going to see this? Why wouldn't no, we see this? You're not going to see, you're not going to see, uh, sa- you're not going to hear sound, you're not going to see images or video. So it's nothing live. It's not like what was happening in Georgia, and that's specific to New York, and that's because of the witnesses and the, and the and as well the the, uh, the jury. So uh, reporters are allowed in, so they will then give their opinion of what happened today, you know, and what happened tomorrow, and then you'll have to kind of take it in. And I think again, go to trusted news sources. Don't go overly obsessive with all this stuff. Realize uh, again that we're just going to get probably opening statements. Might get to one witness, uh, Pecker today, who again comes from the pretty wild times in the uh, the news of the world, and the uh, uh, but he's no longer you know, he's not with those companies. And um, again, that's if both the prosecutors and the defense get through their opening statements. That you would then go to the prosecution; they'd bring their first witness. Supposedly, he is their first witness. We we don't know that a hundred percent, but that did leak. We don't even have a witness list. Yep. Usually, you have that. We don't even have a hundred percent confirmed uh, witness list, Logan. But we do know that the that the trial is beginning, and it will not go a uh, very long today, only till about uh, two p.m. Eastern uh, time. I do want to go to CC Hal as well. And CC, this is uh, important, and I, and I think it's uh, we we want to make sure it's clear for our audience because they want to know what we're doing, that we are taking action on Iran. You know, this is also huge news. The fact that uh, Israel hit back against Iran, and Iran, while threatening Israel, 
did nothing in response. So we, what did we see? We saw two things happen, Logan. I think it's a very important and why our letters are also important. One, we saw that Israel's defenses while working with the world could basically take down all of Iran's aggressive acts. We also saw that Iran could not stop any of Israel's aggressive acts, including aggressive acts that were right next to their nuclear facilities. So, I mean, think about the fact they couldn't shoot down one Israeli. Uh, they had Their defenses didn't work. It shows uh, Israel kind of set, showed what they could do without having to do it. And so far, we have not seen a response yet back from Iran. And, CC, we also are getting strong, though, at international organizations where the ACLJ and ECLJ have combined to say that we've got to get sanctions and designate the IRGC as a terrorist organization, not just from the U.S., but from more countries around the world. Yeah, so we sent this letter um, to the United Nations. Um, We're going to send it to over 40 member states um, and every member uh, that's on the Security Council. And as we know, the United Nations makes more resolutions condemning Israel than any other member state. So we want to point out to them that their own Security Council resolutions, actually Security Council Resolution 1373, condemns terrorist attacks and reaffirms the inherent right to self-defense and requires that all member states prevent and suppress the financing of terrorist acts, as well as freeze funds and other financial assets or economic resources to anyone who participates or facilitates terrorist acts. So we're pointing out that Iran funds, facilitates, and participates in terrorist acts, and under their own resolution, it requires that member states actually have sanctions and do take other steps to punish Iran, and we call on the member states to do that. I mean, what we are really looking for is economic sanctions. We know that's what really hurts Iran. I mean, they have been, to an extent, a CC. they have been embarrassed. I mean, when you fired Israel... And everything that you fire, you fire a thousand drones and you file ballistic missiles and there nothing hits. Right? And then Israel responds and none of your defenses work. So you don't even pick up on it. You can say all the crazy stuff you want to say, but the reality is the crazy stuff you want to say, you can't actually accomplish. Now, does that mean that they're not dangerous? No, because of course if they have Billions of dollars to spread around CC. They go to groups like Hamas, yes. who don't need really expensive equipment to go and kill what we saw were a thousand, more than a thousand Jews in one day and take hundreds of hostages. Yeah. Many, which are now dead. That's right. And they fund not only Hamas, but Hezbollah and the Houthis. And so it's every single um, terrorist that is attacking and targeting um, Israel. That all, like I think one of the the former prime ministers said from Israel, that Iran is basically the head of the terrorist octopus, that that's, they're the head and they're the ones that are funding it. There's, they're the ones that are controlling it and targeting, um, Israel. But make no mistake, they'll be coming after America next because we're, but we're the actual big Satan. Israel's the small Satan. So, um, we just continue to point out that you cannot let Iran get away with this, and you're exactly right. Sanctioning them, economic sanctions, punishing them is the way to do it, and and it has to be a concerted effort from all the member states. Yeah, I also want to encourage everyone, as we said, you know, this is the incredible work that the ACLJ and the ECLJ does for you. And if you need legal help, if you're one of these students, by the way, or you're a parent of one of these students, we'd love for you to reach out to us right now, aclj.org slash help. We're trying to do what we can. I know a lot of people said, well, what can we do with these campuses? Uh, there's a lot of those calls saying that. Uh-huh. You know, what we can do is if we can have clients, we can represent them and, and, and really take it to the universities uh, is what you can do. So do that right now. Go to aclj.org slash help or encourage people to do that during the Life and Liberty Drive. I also right now want to tell you, we have two lines open. Uh, and we're going to take as many calls as we can in the next segment. So go ahead and give us a call. If it's about one of the related topics, that would be great. 1-800-684-3110. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Rumble, uh, you can call in as well. We'd love that. Also, you can hit that thumbs up. Vote in the poll. Do those kind of things. Every time you interact, yeah. comment. Uh, tell us where you're watching from. I know that sounds ridiculous, but every time there's a comment, that helps more people see this show. So if you could right now... Uh, Just do that. In the chat, if you have nothing to say and you don't know what else to say, I know thousands of you watch and just want to be educated. That's great. 
Tell us where you're watching from. I'd love to hear worldwide where you're coming from. Maybe you're coming from New York. Maybe you're you're looking out your window right now, like people we know looking out their window, seeing these yeah. protests on the streets. Let us know in the chat right now. And, you know, I think what's also unique about this, Logan, is you've got President Trump's trial. Yeah. Um, this is the first uh, criminal trial. This criminal trial wants to be done in about eight to nine weeks. I mean, this is where they would like so to put him behind to bars. So it would take us to you know, midsummer. Midsummer. In about nine weeks, and then you're about, what, three, four months from the general election. Yeah, but, I mean, that's just one trial. I mean, so, and this is another one that, again, this wants to put him behind bars. This is not a civil trial. This is a criminal trial uh, by Alvin Bragg. So, again, it kind of got ahead of where we thought things were going to were gonna move, and it started moving much quicker when they got the jury selected a lot quicker than they thought that was going to happen. Um, it, it only took about like, two days, two and a half days, and people thought it might even take – over a week, plus this Passover week, things like that. They would slow p- things potentially down. There's been some issues with the judge there as well. Those uh, did get picked up. So we can talk about that as well throughout this week. We're not going to ignore, of course, that trial. In fact, I've been doing it and talking about it since very early this morning uh, <laughs> when I was on Newsmax in our time. It was, uh, uh, it was 6.58 a.m. Yeah, well, I'm watching. There are people watching right now from all over the country and around the world. We've got people watching in Alaska, Puerto Rico, the U.K., uh, people who want to be educated on what's happening. Because as we know, uh, it is different, even in somewhere like the U.K. You may not hear as much of their news right. over here, but Donald Trump and American news, uh, it makes quite an impact. Oh, Dominates a lot of what's going on in, in the worldwide. If Jewish beaten up on major university college campuses in the United States, and Donald Trump is on criminal trial here in the U.S., and it all happens to be during Passover in New York City, uh, it's making news around the world. And by the way, not necessarily positive news about the United States. No. It plays into some of the worst about what how these, these, uh, these anti-Jewish and anti-Israel groups want people to think about the United States. They want them to think, you know, they don't want the Jews either, really. See? During Passover, look what their top universities and schools do. They want those Jews out. Get out. We don't want to make it be a safe place for you. We want this to be a dangerous place for you. And it's why the ACLJ has opened up and said, if you need help, if you need assistance, we're not going to charge you. Just come to us, whether you're a student, whether you're faculty, aclj.org slash help. We have had, we've helped so many of these students before, so many of these faculty before, some very publicly, uh, some very behind the scenes, or whatever is necessary from uh, the Jewish community. Yeah, but you can have your gifts doubled right now. All you have to do is make any That's donation right. of any kind at aclj.org during our Life and Liberty Drive, and there's only a few days left. It's just, it just goes till the end of this month. Again, aclj.org slash life and liberty. You can do that or just scan the code right now. You'll see a QR code if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Rumble. You can do that. Donations are doubled. You can also become a recurring member. And it looks like President Trump, his trial has wrapped for the day. They're going to wrap early. Early. So I wonder if they just did the open prosecution opening, right? We'll discuss it coming up in the next segment, so yeah, stay tuned. History is unfolding in Lower Manhattan as prosecutors begin laying out the case against former President Trump. Jury selection wrapped up on Friday. The 12-person jury is made up of seven men and five women, along with six alternates. Later this morning, both the prosecution and the defense are expected to lay out their cases during opening statements. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Of jurors' minds are made up at the end wow. of opening statements, wow. according to many a study. And there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. If you hear a persuasive story and then you hear another persuasive story, you make a decision just as how your mind works as to which one you believe. Mm. And if you get invested in that belief, Mm -hmm. like that's your belief, it takes a lot to knock you off that investment. So it carries you through the trial. Absolutely. I think the defense will contend that no crimes were committed at all. Trump was targeted because he's running for president. The prosecutors built their case on deceptions and a misuse of the law and uh, a bunch of liars who cannot be trusted. An opening statement is your opportunity to preview your case. I expect that neither side will take more than roughly 60 to 70 minutes. And that means that we will have time to get to the first witness who, as you noted, is expected to be former chairman of American Media and the National Enquirer, David Packer. This is done as election interference. Everybody knows it. 
I'm here instead of being able to be in Pennsylvania and Georgia and lots of other places campaigning. The core of the case against Trump is that he misreported the so-called hush money, so the defense is going to tell these jurors in the opening statements that the money paid was lawful, doesn't qualify as a campaign donation, that Trump was not involved in keeping the records, and regardless, those records were both accurate and lawful. Welcome back uh, to Secular. Interesting today that we knew that the Trump trial, this is the Alvin Bragg trial, would end at least by 2 p.m. today. So what we've heard now from the trial, there's no video and there's no audio for this trial. So you just get regular reporting. And, of course, President Trump came out after the trial uh, decided to close it for the day. You've had the opening statements now done by both the prosecution and the defense. They have also called their first witness. Then President Trump uh, decided he would speak uh, to the press. Can we play that for some of our audience? I think that's important uh, just to kind of, again, see his kind of reaction to her, his first day in court. Speaking court is over for the day. Let's watch. Thank you. And they call it a legal expense. That's the exact term they use, legal expense, in the books. And another thing that wasn't even said was we never even deducted it as a tax deduction. So that takes a whole of it. Most people want to deduct everything. We never even took it as a tax deduction. But they call the payment to a lawyer a legal expense in the books. They didn't call it construction. They didn't say you're building a building. It called a payment to a lawyer because, as you know, Cone uh, is a lawyer. Represented a lot of people over the years. Now, I'm not the only one. And wasn't very good in a lot of ways in terms of his representation. But he represented a lot of people. This is over whether or not when he put down the, the expense to Stephanie Richards, Stormy Daniels, for her to be quiet about whether or not she had this relationship, which she in the past has said she hadn't had. All it was was, did he put the expense down correctly? Now, remember, that was the initial charge was, did you do the right business expense? To make it a felony, that's just a misdemeanor. You pay a fine. To make it a felony, they had to tie it to a federal a federal election crime. And so 34 of these incidents, because of the 34 payments, that they're trying to make into an election crime, again, I think we'll hear from reporters. I don't think you're getting a lot from today. You're going to get, again, witness one. Yeah. You're going to get some wild witnesses in this one. I mean, you're getting Stormy Daniels, Cohen, uh, Pecker, guys from, I mean, you know, the, the news of the world and the, the, yep. the National Enquirer. I mean, it is a, uh, it's about as Trump as tr it can get if you were going to put a yeah, Trump trial you, you together. Wish that it was televised. Uh, let's go ahead and take some yes, phone it calls. It almost feels like it'd be something, it would be in the middle of Ghostbusters. Like, yeah, yeah. Like uh, Ghostbusters 3, this is just part of it. Yeah, let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, he didn't like that. Uh, let's go to uh, Ann in Pennsylvania, line two. Ann, you're on the air. I didn't like Ghostbusters 3 because that was it. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. It's such an honor. Um, this lawfare against Trump, this, first of all, this needs to go away. Sure. But I just before I get to my question, this Jew hate and the normalizing of it all is such an abomination and appalling, I believe, both morally and spiritually. So when New York City state officials in general are not doing their job on combating Jew hate. This goes completely against the Constitution. So when colleges and state officials fail to step up, I believe Congress and courts come into play. This is where you guys have helped so greatly in many, many different ways. So um, would you agree, this is my question, so would you agree that probably the best thing to do right now would be defunding the, from the private sector, that means parents who are Funding their children's college education, right? Because there's many reasons why colleges, in my opinion, should be defunded, okay? Um, so now, and on a state level, do you think that defunding is necessary and would have a huge impact on getting Listen, them to see that from Elise Stefanik. We saw Congress say, get rid of these uh, university presidents. And guess what happened, Logan? They've been getting rid of these yeah. university presidents. And even the private. Columbia has yeah. come under uh, attack. Yes, these are private institutions, but they take federal dollars, so they have to come testify. Remember, that ad was when they wouldn't uh, clearly condemn anti-Semitism 
on campus or support for Hamas. Yeah. Yeah, it was well, as anti-Semitism. We hate every we, we hate all Jews, which means we're not singling out a student, an individual student, which would be a hate crime. It was crazy. Uh, it was crazy. Let's go ahead and continue on. Somebody of you guys have called. Thomas is calling from New but, York. But Congress is on it now, Logan. Yeah, for I mean, sure. This is not something that people we're just ignoring anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to Thomas, who I think was very clear to say he's from New York State, <laughs> not New York City. Thomas, you're on the air. Oh, hi. Thank you. Um, my wife and I were longtime monthly supporters. Thank you. And we're just very upset by what's happening on these college campuses, so close to home even. Uh, what's the best thing for us to do? Fight um, back. Like, do Fight we back. You want to support groups like the ACLJ. So we have been involved in the, the City University of New York system, the State University of New York system, the private system in New York, fighting back for students' rights, faculty rights, and I think you're just going to see that that fight, Logan, is going to get a lot more intense. It's going to get a lot more attention. It's going to get a lot more heated. And uh, unfortunately, I think that these uh, Jewish students are going to have to decide to make sure that this is a country that they have their rights protected in, that they're going to have to say, that it's, it's, I'm willing to fight back. I'm willing to, if I need it, go to the ACLJ, get the legal assistance I need, yeah. and file the lawsuit if I have to, to make sure... I feel safe, and that I've got my constitutional rights in the United States of America. Yeah, and Deborah on uh, watching on YouTube in Texas on line one. I want to go to her because she actually has a question about that in the legal standing. Yeah. Go ahead, Deborah. Okay, hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for what you do for standing up for the legal rights of America. Sure. Um, and, I'll, and I've got to say, I pray for Trump every day. So doing him a total, total horrible disservice. But my question is, these riots that are going on at these colleges, who has the legal authority to stop this? I mean, the colleges. this is horrible. The, the, the colleges, they've got campus police, which are actual real police. They've got riot police at some of these schools. Um, uh, these are in major cities. You've got the metro police, city police. They all have enough resources to shut the bad actors down. It's not like there's three million bad actors in a lot of these places it's four and five hundred people yep. but you do have to commit the police to getting involved with them logan sometimes that means some violence yeah. not just you know everybody goes so away peacefully and these liberal schools what they can't also stand is showing police actually arresting people and by police right. violence. Right. they have to figure out how also to deal, police in a how to deal with this kind of protest. They don't know yeah. what to do. Let's wrap it up with Julie in Florida on line one. Or I'm sorry, line six. Julie, you are on the air. Final call. Sorry, Charlie, we didn't get you. Call back tomorrow. We'll do. Our, we'll get you up front. Uh, Julie, you're on the air. Hi, guys. Love you. Watch you all the time. Sign yeah. petitions. Thank people you. donate Great. whatever you can because this is the only way we can fight. My question is, why, for months and months, we heard about mega extremists, how bad we were. We were uh, violent. They were talking about it on the news. They were talking yeah. about it, the Biden administration. Why is nobody bringing this up, what they are doing to our Jew Jewish community people? Well, I think we, we are starting to do it. I mean, I think that's what we're doing in Congress. That's what Republicans are doing in Congress. We're having the hearings about what are happening at the universities. We're saying this is what's happening in Passover. The first day of Passover and Columbia University has to go virtual because they can't get their university under control because of the hatred of Jews on campus. And they're worried about more Jews being physically and violently injured, not just hearing bad things, but literally being injured and someone even getting killed. So... They've got, we've got to fight back. Then you have to fight for your rights. That's what we do at the ACLJ, Logan, during our Life and Liberty Drive. Yeah, wrapping up you right double now. the impact right now at ACLJ.org. Double the impact of your donation. Go to ACLJ.org and donate today.